As the world becomes increasingly reliant on electricity for everyday tasks, the issue of power outages in South Africa is a matter of great concern. Now the recurrence of load chain highlights the fragility of the country's power infrastructure and the urgent need for sustainable solutions to ensure a reliable energy supply. We want to look into the complexities of South Africa's electricity grid and the factors contributing to the persistent challenges faced by the ESCOM, which is the state-owned power utility. In a statement shared on the social media platform X, ESCOM revealed that load shedding had been temporarily halted for 18 days during late December and New Year's Day. This marked the longest uninterrupted period without load shedding in South Africa since the summer of 2022, and that was confirmed by the power company. The resumption of power cuts underscores the persisting challenges faced by South Africa's electricity infrastructure and the ongoing efforts required to address and to stabilize the national power grid. Well, that said, joining us now to have this conversation is Kevin Mileham, um, DA Shadow Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy in Cape Town. Thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us. Lovely to be with you. All right, Kevin, um, can you take us through the current status of power outages in South Africa? Well, we've been without uh, load shedding, as you said, for about two weeks uh, in the period over Christmas and New Year. And as of yesterday morning, we returned to stage two and stage three load shedding. We're alternating between stage two and stage three load shedding. Uh, 2023 was the worst year on record of load shedding in South Africa's history. We had more load shedding in a single year than in the previous eight years combined. Now, a lot of that is because of ESCOM's failing power fleet, that it is old, it is poorly maintained, uh, and, and so that is the primary cause of the immediate crisis that we, we find ourselves in today, that uh, unplanned outages have caused us to, to go back into load shedding. That and obviously the ramp up in demand as we move back into a normal business environment post the Christmas break. And uh, what exactly is the purpose of load shedding in South Africa again? So what load shedding does is it prevents a total grid collapse. It, it allows ESCOM to mitigate the effects of unplanned outages and uh, prevent other power stations from failing or tripping because of increased demand or because the demand exceeds what, what they have available to supply. So they basically rotate uh, a power outage across various areas of the country. So uh, in every municipality, they will be given a, a schedule and they will be told you have to shed power for two hours or three hours or four hours uh, per day in, in these areas. And um, why exactly are we seeing, uh, um, you know, de de seeing it degenerate from stage two to, to stage three? Is it that um, the closer it is that it's looking like there's going to be a general um, destruction in the power, then they increase it to another stage? Or why exactly is it going from stage two to stage three? Sure. So it's about balancing demand and supply. Uh, as, as demand increases, obviously you need to match your, your electricity supply to, to the demand. And the reality is that South Africa has a shortfall in supply at the moment, uh, probably somewhere in the range of between four and a half and six gigawatts of generation supply shortfall. So it's, it's about matching that. As that, that number increases, that shortfall number increases, so we move up stages in load shedding from stage two to stage three to stage four, etc. The reason why we're alternating between two and three at the moment is because of the ability of ESCOM to recharge its reserves uh, when there is less demand. So they, they then drop down a stage when they have a little bit of power in reserve in, in pumped storage, for example. They can then drop down a, a stage or two. Okay. Um, we do understand that load shedding is part of the efforts to, um, you know, tackle the power issues and, of course, to pre prevent a complete collapse of the electricity grid. But are there any alternative measures? Well, I think we need to, to back up a step and, and understand where load shedding comes from. Load shedding ar uh, arises, and it goes back as far as, as 2008. In fact, it goes back further than that. It goes back to 1998, where ESCOM 
and the the South African government were advised that if they did not build new generation at that time, uh, there would be a shortfall in supply around the 2007-2008 period. That then came to pass. In 2007, we saw that we had the first load shedding in South Africa, and it's gotten progressively worse as ESCOM's coal fleet has aged. So we now have a number of, of coal-fired power stations that are at end of life or near end of life, and obviously their maintenance issues uh, then increase at the same time. So it, it, it has a knock-on effect that we're not building new generation, we're unable to, to, to maintain what we currently have, and, and so we, we, we have a, a real crisis developing. The impact of that is that it's, in, it, it's having an enormous effect on our economy. Uh, we're losing jobs. We, we're not seeing the job creation. We're not seeing the economic growth that we should see in South Africa. Uh, people are saying, well, I'd rather take my, my, my money and invest it elsewhere because uh, I can get a reliable supply of electricity. So we have, we have this massive unemployment crisis in South Africa that is partially a consequence of the electricity crisis. The question that, that we need to ask ourselves is what can we do and what is being done to address that crisis? And unfortunately, the government has failed horrendously uh, to address the crisis over the last 15 years. So we, we sit in a situation where they are looking at long-term solutions, but not even implementing those well, and not addressing the short-term issues of a, a lack of supply right now. We need to be, be making it easier for people to to put solar panels on their roofs. We need to be making it cheaper for them to do that. We need to make it easier for businesses to do so. At the same time, we need to be building transmission infrastructure to allow utility scale uh, independent power producers to connect to the grid. We, we went through a stage in December last year where the latest renewable energy bid window, bid window six, where a number of bidders were unable to, to conclude their bids because there was no transmission capacity available to them. So we've got, we've got multiple causes that we need to address. We need to address the generation side of it from, from a private sector perspective. We need to address it from an ESCOM perspective in that we need to maintain our existing fleet and we need to build transmission infrastructure. Once we've done all of those things, then we can start looking at longer term solutions, building new power plants on a, on a, a, a large scale. All right. And um, if this goes on for longer, what impacts can South Africans expect as a result of this state three load shedding, especially on the economy? Because I know that so many businesses mm -hmm. are being hindered and uh, disrupted because of this, you know, um, perishable goods and stuff like that. So what, what is going to be the long lasting impact on the economy of South Africa? Look, I think we, the, the reality is that most South Africans are <laughs> accustomed to the situation of load shedding and we work around it. But it is an impact on the cost of living. It affects the price of everything that we do. You, you have to put in generators and you have to fuel those generators to keep foodstuffs cold to make sure that you don't break your cold chain or medicines or whatever. You need to ensure that, that health care is provided and, and, and that uh, hospitals have electricity and, and uh, generators and the like. So it adds to the cost of living on an enormous scale. At the same time, as I indicated earlier, uh, certainly uh, the mining sector is one that's that's hugely impacted, but our industrial sector is hugely impacted by uh, an inability of the state to ensure a reliable supply of electricity. And people are saying, well, you know, if it's going to cost me more and I'm not going to have a reliable supply of electricity, I'll go somewhere where, where it is. So we need to make sure that as a country, we are building uh, that into our planning, that we are saying, how can we, we, we rectify the immediate short-term consequences of a lack of electricity supply. Now, um, we also know that there are certain um, countries in Africa that still suffer, you know, um, this power issues. How do you think South Africa compares to these countries in terms of um, load shedding or lack of power supply and what are the similarities and what do these countries do that South Africans can learn from or what is SA doing that these countries can learn from as well? I think the important thing to note is that every country has its own unique set of challenges. They have their own problems and, and issues that they have to deal with uh, and they, they deal with them uh, on, a, on a local scale in that particular country or region. Uh, from South Africa's perspective, we, we sit on enormous natural resources. So we sit on, on renewable energy resources, the likes of which are, are available nowhere near to the same extent elsewhere in the world. We have wind along our coastlines, we have solar 
in the Northern Cape uh, and, and certainly in other areas, but even in, in, in the inland areas around Gauteng and in Pumalanga, our solar there is, is, is of such a nature that, that it would provide a, a fairly good uh, return if it was utilized effectively. So renewables are one way that we can certainly address the immediate crisis in South Africa. It is also one of the quicker ways we can get to, to uh, sort out the problem. But we're not going to sort it out through government. ESCOM has proven time and again that they are an unreliable uh, partner in this. And, and so we're going to have to say, well, how can we bring the private sector on board? How can we make sure that, that private companies want to invest in South Africa's energy sector and they want to build power generation for the country? To do that, as I indicated earlier, we've, we've got to have a transmission grid that can take the power from where it's being generated to where it's needed. And that's something that ESCOM does own and does need to invest in. Now, we've seen a figure that was quoted at the end of 2022 by the then CEO of ESCOM, Andre de Reiter. Uh, he, he quoted a figure of 180 billion rand over 10 years. Uh, more recently, the, that number has increased to 250 billion rand over 10 years, and they have to build something like 14,500 kilometers of transmission lines to, to take this power from where it's being generated to where it's where it's needed. At the same time, we need to look at how we can exploit our, our natural gas resources uh, and, and the other gas resources that are available in South Africa. And then we need to look at how do we maintain our existing fleet of power plants. Um, and one of the challenges that ESCOM has is that the, the fleet is failing. The, the coal-fired fleet is currently operating somewhere in the region of about 45% efficiency. So we're only getting 45% of the energy that we should be getting from those plants uh, into the grid. And then lastly, uh, nuclear. You know, we, we've got a, a nuclear power plant at Kuburg um, that has, has reached the end of its operating lifespan and is currently undergoing what they call a lifespan extension. And it has to be re-licensed in July, June, July this year. Now, if that license is not approved, we effectively would add another two stages of load shedding to South Africa's electricity crisis. And um, are there certain regions in South Africa currently that are more affected than the others, or this cuts across every region equally? No, so load shedding is, is handled nationally and it's distributed across all regions equitably. So all municipalities, if we go to stage two or stage three load shedding, all municipalities then have to implement that. However, they can offset if they are able to generate their own electricity, they, they're able to, to say, well, we've reduced it by that, but we're able to provide our own reserves into the, into the grid, into the local grid to, to offset that to some extent. Uh, but nobody's able to get rid of load shedding completely. Um, but it is implemented in, in a standard format across all, all uh, municipalities in South Africa. Okay, so um, we want to believe that um, with this issue of load shedding, the government is, you know, trying its best to make every other alternative accessible, you know, for the people of South Africa. So what is the pricing like uh, when it comes to prices of, for example, fuel, um, the solar that you mentioned and things like that, other alternatives that people can depend on, you know, with the issue of, of load shedding, what's the pricing like? Do you think that the government has been fair enough or the country itself is fair enough in compensating for the lack of power, constant power? Well, frankly, no. Uh, we've seen that the price of electricity has increased in the region of about 480% over the last 15 years since uh, load shedding was implemented. Uh, it's, it's a massive, massive impact on the cost of living. At the same time, the, the price of fuel has gotten progressively more expensive. It's just come down a little bit uh, in the last uh, couple of months. but. Uh, Obviously, the, the Rand dollar exchange rate impacts that, as do various other tariffs and the like that, that get added on and government taxes and levies. Um, my political party believes that, that one of the things that government should be doing is, first of all, uh, getting rid of the road accident fund levy, which is uh, charged on every liter of fuel that is used, whether it's used for, for road transport purposes or for generation purposes. So we believe that... that uh, where fuel is used for generation purposes, you shouldn't pay the road accident fund levy. Um, that's one thing that, that could immediately uh, ease the, the impact of the cost of living. So from your own estimate, and this is going to be my final question, 
Um, how long do you think that the whole uh, load shedding is going to last? And do you see a light at the end of the, of the tunnel? And by that, I mean, do you see um, a solution for the um, power grid issues? Is it going to be standing strong at the end of this whole thing? I don't think that the grid is in any immediate danger of, of, of collapse or any immediate danger of, of, of uh, any challenges to the grid itself. What we are seeing is that the private sector are stepping up more and more. We've seen four gigawatts of uh, solar electricity added to the grid in the last, uh, I think it's the last 18 months. And, and we're going to see more of that over the next several years. So we're going to see a significant uptake from, from a private sector, and that will obviously reduce demand on ESCOM's generation side. Uh, and so I think that we will eventually get out of it if, if uh, we make it easier for the private sector to, to, to step up to the plate, we make it cheaper for them to do so, if we reduce import duties and the like on, on solar panels, on wind turbines and, and so on. But at the same time, as a country, we have to invest in our transmission infrastructure. And so there, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done uh, and government needs to step up to the plate. I don't think that the current government, I don't think that the current ministers, certainly I don't think that the fact that we have three different ministers who are responsible for load shedding in one way or another, that being the Minister of Public Enterprises, uh, Praveen Gordon, who is responsible for ESCOM, the Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy, my immediate counterpart, Gwede Mantashe, and the Minister of Electricity in the Presidency, uh, uh, Minister Skutler Ramakhopa, uh, I don't think they're all pulling in the same direction. And so we've got a little bit of policy confusion. In fact, we've got a lot of policy confusion in inside the ANC government, and I think it's going to have an enormous impact on the elections in 2024. All right. Um, thank you so much, Kevin Mileham, um, DA Shadow Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy in Cape Town. Thank you so much for joining us. And we do hope that um, South Africans, um, you know, with the glimmer of hope that they have, uh, can get easy access and, and swift access to power in no time. Thank you once again. Thank you so much for having me.